Everything new in Kapwing broadcasts directly to you, the creator. This is your Kapwing Direct. Hey everyone, this is Grace from Kapwing and welcome to August's Kapwing Direct, where I'll show you around the newest features added to Kapwing this month and how they can help you make better content faster. This month, we've got lots of new automatic editing features and smart tools, in addition to a way to get Kapwing Pro for free, so let's get into it. Now the first exciting thing I've got for y'all today is that we just launched our Kapwing for Education plan. This means that Kapwing Pro is now 100% free for eligible students and teachers. We did this so that it's easier to bring learning to life and enhance collaboration in classrooms. And you can apply for your free account or learn more about the program by clicking the second link in the description or going to kapwing.com edu. The next new feature this month is Brand Kit. We know that keeping all of your content on brand and consistent can be hard, especially when multiple people are making the content. You're always having to re-upload logos, find the hex codes for your brand colors, and that gets really tiring. So BrandKit can help you stay consistent all the time across the whole team with your content. This is a pro feature, so you need to upgrade to Kapwing Pro to get access. If you go to the top left corner, it says BrandKit, and this is where you can upload the brand assets for that your whole team will be able to use. So at the top, you can upload any images, audio, video clips that you use very frequently in project. Then you can upload your brand colors with the exact hex codes, and then also custom fonts. Anyone in your workspace is inside the editor actually making projects. You'll see that in the My Media tab of the media section, all of these brand assets show up so that you can easily put them into your video or your project with just one click. You don't have to re-upload them every time and everyone on your team will be using the exact same assets. Same thing with any of the color selectors, you'll see that your brand colors immediately show up, so you don't need to go in here and add in your hex code each time. You can just immediately choose the color you want, and it makes it just really fast and easy to access your brand assets. We've also just added clean audio, which uses AI to make the audio in your project smoother. In just one click, clean audio will remove background noise, correct loudness, and help reduce popping sounds in your audio and videos so you can make higher quality content with minimal effort. This is another pro feature, so make sure to upgrade so you can use clean audio for your projects. To find it, just head to the editor and upload a audio file or a video that has sound. This is just a sample sound that I made, which sounds like this. This is Grace, and there's a lot of background noise to the sound I just recorded and all you have to do is click the sound in the timeline then click clean audio on the right side over here and then click clean audio again and it'll start loading once it's complete it'll tell you at the top here and then you can go back and listen to the sound and this is what it sounds like now this is grace and there's a lot of background noise to the sound I just recorded so the loudness in the background is much lower feels more balanced and focused on your voice and so when you have audio files that you need to make sure the quality is better, you can immediately just use it with one click with clean audio. Another AI tool we added recently is Find Scenes, which will make resizing videos a lot faster. It basically automatically detects where the scene changes happen in your video and then creates splits at those points automatically. So to use it, I'm going to actually resize a video from our YouTube channel and then head to the editor and paste it in. Now, as you can see, if I just scroll through this video, you'll see that there are a lot of different scene changes and parts where maybe the subject of the video is not gonna be in the center. So to make sure that all the parts of the video are square in the center and viewers can see them, I'm gonna first just chop it up into its different clips with of the different scenes and I'll use front scenes to do that. So just click your video in the timeline and then on the right side here, you'll see the find scenes button. If your video has different scenes, it'll show you where it thinks those scenes are, but with these yellow bars here. So each one, it's considering that a different scene. Now you can also increase or decrease the sensitivity of what it considers a scene and where it'll split. But I think usually in the middle is pretty good for me. And so once I hit done here, this video will automatically turn into the different clips that indicate the different scenes. So now if I wanted to go and resize some of these things, I can just go, go and click each scene and then crop, adjust, resize for those different parts. This also makes it easier if you want to add and align different elements. For example, if you add a text box and you want it to be on the screen at a certain time, the find scenes feature allows you to immediately just align 
each overlay to that specific scene. We've also revamped the resize flow, so now you can repurpose videos faster and make them look more professional with our resize canvas feature. In just a few clicks, you can take a single video and adjust it to be the right size for every other platform, whether it's for TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or somewhere else. Upload your original video into Kapwing. So for this one, I'm taking one of our existing YouTube videos that's in the horizontal 16 by nine format, then click behind the canvas on the gray and you'll sh you should see this button called Resize Canvas. Click that and you can choose your new size. So this is also helpful because you don't have to remember the sizes for each platform. They're all right here. You just have to choose which one you're gonna post to. So let's say I'm not trying to convert this long form YouTube video into a YouTube short. I will just click that or you can do a custom size here but I'm gonna make it a YouTube short. And that is usually in the vertical nine by 16 format. So it immediately resizes it to that format. And now you can even customize how more specifically your video will look on the screen. You have settings like you can fit to center. So your video is all, the whole video is on the screen the whole time. And that comes with another setting called canvas blur, which you can see the background is a blurred version of what's on the canvas. That just makes it look a little more professional and elevated. So you don't have, if you, if you turn this off, you'll have these white bars and that just takes up a lot of space, it makes the video less interesting. So if you have canvas blur on, it just looks a little more purposeful. Alternatively, you can just fill and crop the video to the whole screen. So there's no background blur, there's no white bars or anything. Your video is fully on the screen and apply those effects. And now when you play the video, you can see that these whole video is on the screen and the whole entire rest of the, the screen is filled up with a blurred version. So it keeps the video moving, keeps it interesting, makes it look a little elevated. This the bottom here is a great place for captions to be put or even on top. And yeah, then once you're, you can go ahead and make other edits and then export and post it to the new platform. Last but not least, you can now give and get feedback with comments on your projects. Instead of shuffling between other platforms to share feedback, you can just centralize and act on it all in one place to ensure it fits the team's vision. To find comments, you can head to the editor, to a project that you want to share feedback on, or even just leave notes for yourself on and then go to the top right corner and click the comments button. And that'll open up the comments panel. So now you can see uh, there are already some comments I've left here. If you want to add a new one, you can scroll to the part of the video you want to leave the comment on. It'll save the timestamp or you can just not include a timestamp and just write a general comment and then hit enter or comment and it'll leave the comment in the list. You can also go back to other comments, reply to them, delete them if you click the three dots here. If you don't want to give the link directly into the studio to other people, you can just share the link to the final video page after exporting your video and the comments will still show up on the right side here. You can do the same things where you can reply to them, leave more comments. So hopefully this will make your iteration processes on content to make it better, go through different versions a lot faster. That's all I've got for you guys this month. Let us know what you think about these new features or if you have other ones you want to see in the future in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get these updates regularly and we'll see you in the next one.